Hello everyone, this is Lexicon Architect, and for today's commander, we're going to be looking at Anim Pakal, a 3-mana Boros creature that says whenever you attack with one or more non-gnome creatures, you put a 1-1 counter on Anim Pakal, and then you create X 1-1 colorless gnome artifact creature tokens that are tapped and attacking, where X is the number of 1-1 counters on Anim Pakal. So the general strategy of this deck is to put counters on Anim Pakal, attack with our non-gnomes, um, and generate a bunch of tokens equal to the number of 1-1 counters on Nympical. So, for example, if there's 5 counters on a Nympical, we attack, and then we're going to generate 5 tokens that are tapped and attacking. So, at mana value 1, um, we need to talk about Skull Clamp. So, Skull Clamp is great in this deck because we can attach it to one of our Gnome Artifact creatures to draw cards. And we can continuously do this over and over as long as we have the mana to equip it to one of our artifact creatures. Give it um, minus one, it will die, we'll draw two cards. At mana value two, we're going to be looking at Dragon Spark Reactor that says whenever it or another artifact creature artifact enters the battlefield under your control, you put a charge counter on it. And then for four mana, you can sacrifice it and it deals damage equal to the number of char charge counters on it to target cre to target player and that much damage up to one target creature then we have goblin bombardment um which says sacrifice a creature you deal one damage to any target so this card is good because if they do attempt to board wipe us in response we can just sack all of our creatures in response and deal damage to um whatever we want then we have impact tremors that says whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control it deals one damage to each opponent. So, for example, let's say we make five tokens with our commander, and then we can drain someone for five. And it says each opponent. So we can drain each opponent for five. Next, we play Luminarch Ex um, Aspirant. That says, at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a 1-1 one, one counter on target creature you control. So most likely, we're going to choose our commander so we can generate more tokens. And then we also play Reckless Fireweaver that says whenever an artifact enters the battlefield under your control, it deals one damage to each opponent. So, like I gave the example earlier, if we have five artifact gnomes entering the battlefield, it's going to drain each opponent for five. Um, and then I also want to talk about um, Steel Overseer. Uh, we can tap it to put a 1-1 one -one counter on each artifact creature we control. And then one other important card I want to go over is Throne of the God Pharaoh. Um, a two-mana artifact that says at the beginning of your end step, each opponent loses life equal to the number of tap creatures we control. At mana value three, we're going to be playing Angel Fire Ignition, a three-mana sorcery um, spell that says put two 1-1 one -one counters on target creature. It gains Vigilance, Trample, Lifeling, Indestructible, and Haste until the end of the turn. So we're going to put this on our commander. And then for um, it has a flashback cost for four to uh, cast it from your graveyard, then exile it. So um, most of the time, right after we cast Angel Fire Ignition for the first time, um, if we do have the four mana to do it, the next turn we can do it again. Um, and then we have cards like um, Mentor of the Meek to allow us to draw cards. Tasca is welcome to draw cards. We play Professional Facebreaker because it's going to generate treasure tokens whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player. And then if we need to, we can sacrifice a treasure to exile the top card of our library, and we may play that card this turn. And then lastly, I want to go over Unbreakable Formation. Um, it gives our creatures indestructible until the end of the turn. And if we do, for whatever case, cast this during our main phase, we get to put a 1-1 one -one counter on each of those creatures, and they gain Vigilance until the end of the turn. Um, at main of value 4, we have... Big score, which allows us to pitch a card, to draw two and create two treasure. Blade Historian allows us to give all attacking creatures double strike. We play Clever Concealment to protect our board by having us phase out any number of target non-land permanents. And it also has Convoke. Um, and then we play Niala, um, Sun's Vanguard. Um, it gives attacking tokens double strike. And then whenever one or more tokens you control attack a player, we exile the top card of our library. And during any turn you attack with a token, you may play that card. Then we have Porphyros, God of the Forge. Um, as long as your Devotion to Red is less than 5, it isn't a creature. 
And then whenever another creature enters the battlefield under your control, Perforous deals two damage to each opponent. Then we also play Showdown of the Scouts, which on its first saga allows us to exile the top four cards of our library. And then until the end of our next turn, we may play those cards. And then on chapter two or three, um, whenever you cast a spell this turn, you put a 1-1 counter onto our creature you control. So we're going to be putting our counters on our commander, most likely, so we can generate more tokens um, when we attack with non-known creatures. And lastly, let's talk about Thundering Raiju, uh, a 4-mana haste creature that says when it attacks, put a 1-1 counter to our creature you control, and then it deals X damage to each opponent, where X is the number of modified creatures you control, other than Thundering Raiju, so equipment, auras, and counters are considered modifications. A mana value 5, this is, um, Rabble Rousing is a very strong card for us, because it does have high to weigh 5. So um, we get to look at the top five cards of our library. We choose one. We um, exile underneath this card. And then whenever you attack with one or more creatures, you create that many 1-1 one, one green and white citizen uh, creature tokens. And then if you control 10 or more creatures, you may play the exile card without paying its mana cost. And then at mana value 7, we have our Reckoning to destroy all non-token creatures. Mana value 8, we have Moonshaker Calvary, which is um, the new Crater Hoof, but in white for flying. And then lastly, at mana value 9, um, it's not really considered mana value 9 because it does cost one less to cast for each creature on the battlefield, but it's going to deal 13 damage to each creature. As far as our lands, we play Castle in Ardenvale to create tokens, Castle Embreath to pump our creatures. Um, Manus to Rift to draw us cards, Inventor's Fair to gain us life whenever we control three or more artifacts during our upkeep, Cards Bastion to help us proliferate, um, and then we also have Restless Beelvok. Um, so for three mana, it becomes a 2 2 red and white ox creature token to the end of turn, it's still land, and then whenever it attacks, you put a 1 1, car 1, 1 counter on target creature control. So that's the deck in a nutshell, it's going to cost you $222. I hope you enjoyed this deck tech and have a good day.